Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. This week, our members decide to try out Popper EDH, using an uncommon creature as a commander, and the rest of the deck is all commons. Light totals are 30 and commander damage 16. Let's see what everyone brought to the table. Our first player today is Sam on Disciplined Duelist. This band deck is a Voltron enchantment deck, hoping to play as commander and load up with a ton of auras to swing in for lethal. Sam keeps a hand with a snow-covered forest, a snow-covered plains, Cave of Temptation, Thriving Grove, Bonder's Ornament, Kadama's Reach, and Bolt Drifter. Up next is Ethan on Risen Reef. This Simic deck is Elemental Tribal, hoping to gain cards and land drops off of Risen Reef by loading up the board with Elementals. He keeps an opening hand with a snow-covered forest, a snow-covered island, Evolving Wilds, Halimar Depths, Arseek, Moth Dust Changeling, and Blue Hulk. Third is Cameron on Soul Herder. This is an Azorius Blink deck, hoping to take advantage of powerful onto the battlefield triggers by blinking creatures every turn with this commander. He starts the game with an Island, Path of Ancestry, Azorius Signet, Azorius Locket, Justicar's Portal, Augury Owl, and Peregrine Drake. Last up is Caden on the partner pairing of Malcolm Kenai Navigator and Breach's Brazen Plunderer. This is a deck that's Pirate Tribal, hoping to gain cards and mana advantage through both of his commander's abilities on damage. Caden keeps a hand with Command Tower, Forgotten Cave, Traveler's Amulet, Pirate's Cutlass, Negate, Fiery Cannonade, and Rishadin Cut Purse. We're about to hop right into the game, but before that, go ahead and give us a like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. We post new gameplay videos every week, so you won't want to miss it. Big shout out to our patrons, we really appreciate all support. Link to our Patreon is in the description, as well as a link to the deck lists, our social media, our podcast channel, and our public Discord server. Our channel is partnered with Dragon Shield. So if you really can pick up any new sleeves or magic related products, check out our affiliate link in the description. We are also partnered with Inks Gaming, so if you really can make any custom playmats, use our affiliate link also in the description. Now, on to the gameplay. It looks like Ethan wins the die roll, and he'll start off with Evolving Wilds, and he'll use it to fetch for a snow forest, and then he passes to Cameron, who plays Path of Ancestry, and passes to Caden, who will play Command Tower into Traveler's Amulet, and then he'll pass to Sam. And Sam will play a Thriving Grove on blue, and then he passes back to Ethan who will play a Snow Island, and then he'll tap for two to cast Farseek. He'll find a Tangled Islet to the battlefield tap, and pass the turn to Cameron while he searches. And Cameron will start off with an Island, then he'll tap for two to cast Augury Owl, and he'll scry three. He keeps all three to the top, but does change the order. He then passes the turn to Caden, who starts off with his Forgotten Cave, then he'll crack his Amulet and put an Island to his hand, and then he'll pass the turn to Sam. Sam just plays the Snow Plains, and then passes to Ethan. Ethan will play a Snow Island, and then he'll cast Risen Reef, which triggers upon entering the battlefield. It is not a land, so he does not reveal it, and he'll put it to his hand. He'll then cast Moth Dust Changeling, triggering it again. It's once again not a land, so then he'll pass the turn to Cameron, who plays an Island, and then he'll cast Soul Herder, his commander. Path of Ancestry Trigger will keep the card on top again. He'll then move to combat, hit Caden for one in the air, and then pass the turn to Caden. The owl is blinked on end step, so Soul Herder gets a counter, and Cameron scries three to the top again. Now on Caden's turn, he'll play Island into Prashadden Cut Purse. Sam's able to pay the one, but Ethan and Cameron are tapped out, so they both sacrifice their 1-1 flyers. And then the turn is passed to Sam. Sam will play a Snow Forest, and then he'll tap for three to cast Kodama's Reach. Sam says he's going to find a Snow Island to the battlefield tapped, and a Snow Plains to his hand, and he passes the turn while searching. On Ethan's turn, he'll play a Snow Forest, and then cast Bloodbriar. Risen Reef triggers, and it's on land. The turn is then passed to Cameron, and he'll play a Glacial Floodplain. He'll then cast his Azorius Signet, and then he'll move to combat, and hit Sam for two Commander. The turn is then passed to Caden, who starts off with Mystic Sanctuary. Then he'll tap for three and cast Malcolm. After this, he moves to combat and hits Cameron for one with his cut purse, which triggers Malcolm and gets him a treasure token. The turn is then passed to Sam, who starts off with the Snow Plains. Then he'll cast Discipline Duelist, who enters with a shield counter. Then he'll attach Sentinelize to it, and then he'll cast Thirsting Roots to get another shield counter. The turn is then passed to Ethan, who will stop on end step to cast Growth Spiral. He'll draw a card and then put Halimar Depths onto the battlefield tapped, allowing him to rearrange the top three cards of his library. Then on his turn, he'll cast Bloom Hulk. He declines the proliferation, then off Risen Reef he reveals, shocker, a land. It's Path of Ancestry, and he puts it to the battlefield. He'll then play a Snow Force as land for turn, and use it to cast Relic of Progenitus, which he'll immediately activate to exile Cameron's Owl. 
Ethan will then move to combat, hit Caden for two, then pass the turn to Cameron. Cameron will immediately cast Peregrine Drake, which untaps his four lands. He'll then cast Azorius Locket, then move to his end step, and trigger Soul Herder, which will blink his Peregrine Drake, untapping his lands again. Now in Caden's turn, he will play a mountainous land for turn. Then he casts Breaches. He'll then move to combat and swing Malcolm at Sam, which connects, making him a treasure token and exiling a card. And the exiled card is Arcane Denial. The turn is then passed to Sam, who will play his Cave of Temptation, then he'll cast Heliod's Pilgrim, and with it he finds Steel of the Godhead to his hand, which he will then immediately attempt to cast onto his duelist, but Caden thinks that's a little too good and negates it. Sam is not happy with this outcome, so he moves to combat and hits Caden for 6 commander. Sam will then pass the turn, and Ethan will stop on end step to crack Relic of Progenitus, drawing a card and exiling all graveyards. Then he'll cycle Lonely Sandbar. Now in his turn, he'll play Regular Island as land for turn. Then he'll cast Floodhound with Path of Ancestry. He'll scry to the top, and then Risen Reef will trigger. It's not a land, so he puts it to his hand. He'll then cast Brainstorm. Then he'll enchant a Snow Forest with Utopia Sprawl, naming Blue. And then he'll cast Glimmer Bell. Risen Reef trigger puts Snow Island to the battlefield. Then he casts Fertilid, and this time Risen Reef will put a Snow Forest to the battlefield. Ethan will then pass the turn, but Cameron will stop on end step to pay 4 mana, and sacrifices Azorius Locket to draw 2 cards. Then on his turn, he'll play an island, and then he casts Chrome Courier. Off its ETB trigger, who reveals Star Compass and a Plains, he'll take the Star Compass and gain 3 life. He'll then cast the Star Compass, and then move to his end step, and blink Peregrine Drake with Soul Herder. Now in Caden's turn, he'll play Swiftwater Cliffs as land for turn. Then he'll cast Orozka Relic, and he does have the City's Blessing. Then he passes the turn to Sam. And Sam will start off with Map the Wastes, finding a Snow Forest to the battlefield tapped, and then he'll bolster one. And he chooses to put the counter on his commander since they both have the same toughness. Sam will then cast Benevolent Blessing. Now it's pretty obvious that his best color choice here is blue, and Cameron knows that. And since Cameron only has blue creatures on the battlefield, this will put him in danger, so he decides to counterspell it. Sam then decides to not swing, and he'll just pass to Ethan, who activates Fertilid on instep. Then on his turn, he'll mutate Dreamtail Heron onto his Bloodbriar. Path of Ancestry will scry one to the top, and then he'll draw a card from a mutating. After this, he'll cast Bonder's Ornament. Then he'll pass the turn. On instep, Cameron will just a card's portal his Chrome Courier. And the two revealed cards are Celebrity Fencer and Rambunctious Mutt, and he keeps the Mutt. Then, on his turn, Cameron will move to combat, and he swings for one in the air at Sam. Then he'll move to his end step, and blink his Chrome Courier. And between Aviation Pioneer and an Island, he chooses the Pioneer. The turn is then passed to Caden, and he'll start off by tapping for three and casting Fiery Cannonade. Ethan responds by activating Fertilid and Floodhound. The Cannonade will then resolve, and Sam's commander loses one of its shield counters. Caden will then move to combat, and he'll swing Malcolm at Cameron, and Breaches at Sam. And they both don't block. Not that Sam could. Both Malcolm and Breaches will trigger twice. Sam exiles Witness Protection and Cameron and Island. Caden then asks Ethan what he's scared of most on the table, and Ethan replies Soul Herder. So, for the low, low price of one blue mana, the Soul Herder becomes a legitimate business person. The turn is then passed to Sam, and he'll start off with his own Bonders ornament. Then he'll move to combat and swing his duelist at Caden, who chumps with his cut purse. He'll then pass the turn, and Ethan stops on instep to crack his clue and draw a card. And since a permanent was sacrificed, his Heron gets a 1 1 counter. Now moving to his turn, Ethan will start off by recasting Risen Reef. This triggers Path of Ancestry, which he leaves on top, and guess what? Risen Reef triggers, and it's another land. Specifically, Rhymewood Falls. After this, Ethan will tap for 6 and cast Air Cult Elemental. When it enters the battlefield, he'll bounce Sam's Duelist, and then he also has a Risen Reef trigger. It's non land. The turn is then passed to Cameron, who stops on instep to cast Displace. He targets Peregrine Drake and Legitimate Business Person, who loses his PhD and returns his Soul Herder. Then, on Cameron's turn, he'll start off by tapping for 3 and casting Aviation Pioneer, which creates a 1 1 Thopter when it ETVs. He'll then move to his end step and blink it with Soul Herder to get a counter and another Thopter. Now, on Caden's turn, he'll start off by casting Bone Saw for free, then he'll equip it to Breaches. Caden will then move to combat and swing both Malcolm and Breaches at Sam, but before damage, Sam will cast Tangle, preventing all damage and keeping those creatures tapped. After combat, Caden will cast Headstrong Brute, and then he'll pass to Sam. And Sam will start off by tapping for 3 and evoking Mold Drifter. It'll die when it enters, but he'll also draw 2 cards. Sam will then recast his Duelist, and then the turn is passed to Ethan. But Ethan will stop on instep to activate his Bonders Ornament, and he and Sam will both draw a card. Then, on his turn, he'll cast Thunder Drake. Path of Ancestry scries to the top, and it's non-land, so it goes to his hand off Risen Reef. He'll then cast Cultivate, finding a tapped Snow Island to the battlefield, and a Forest to his hand, which he plays for turn. Then he'll cast Aarakocker Sneak, which takes the initiative once he enters the battlefield. And when he finds the secret entrance, he'll tutor for a basic land to his hand. And then the turn is passed to Cameron, who will immediately cast Goggles of Night and equip them to a Thopter. 
We'll then move to combat and hit Caden for one in the air, and he'll get to scry one to the bottom and draw a card when it connects. Then, post-combat, he'll cast Burdened Aerialist, and it makes a treasure token when it ETBs. He'll then move to his end step, blink his Pioneer, and then the turn is passed to Caden, who will start off by equipping his Brute with Bone Saw. He'll then move to combat and hit Sam with it for four, and when it connects, he'll exile Lifelink from Sam's library and make a treasure token. He'll then cast Lifelink onto the Brute, then he'll cast Brazen Freebooter after combat and get another treasure token. The turn is then passed to Sam, who will stop on end step to cast Opt, and he'll keep the scry to the top. Then, on his turn, Sam will tap for three and cast his favorite card of all time, Armadillo Cloak. Then he'll follow it up with a Hyena Umbra. After this, he'll move to combat and swing for five double strike at Cameron, and there's no blocks at the table, so he just takes ten commander. He'll then pass the turn to Ethan, who stops on instep to activate Bonder's Ornament again, so he and Sam will both draw another card. Then, still on instep, he'll cast a Geist Wave targeting Bloomhulk. Then on his turn, he'll seek deeper into the Undercity, and he'll go to the Forge, putting two plus one plus one counters on his Glimmer Bell. He'll then recast Bloom Hulk, scrying one to the top with his Path of Ancestry. Then, with the ETB trigger, he'll put a Tranquil Thicket to the battlefield, and then he'll proliferate all of his counters. After this, he'll tap for four and cast Distant Melodies, which draws him six cards. After this, he'll cast Mold Drifter, which triggers Risen Reef, and it's non-land, then he'll draw two cards. A forest is then played, he'll then pass the turn, and on cleanup, he has to discard five cards, a land and four ramp spells. Now on Cameron's turn, he will immediately move to combat and smack Sam for one in the air. The goggles will trigger, and he gets to scry one to the bottom and draw a card. And then fearing death, Cameron will tap for three and cast Raven Form on Sam's commander. So the duelist is exiled, and Sam forgets to make the bird token. And since a creature was exiled, Soul Herder gets another counter. Cameron will then cast Fairy Seer, and he scries two to the top. Cameron will then cast Archaeomancer, which Caden will snap counter with Exclude, allowing him to draw a card. In case it didn't know, if it resolved, Cameron would have an infinite combo. He would return Displace from his graveyard to his hand, then he'd move to his instep and blink Peregrine Drake, untapping all of his lands, then he'd cast Displace, blinking Peregrine Drake and Archaeomancer, untapping all of his lands, and then getting Displace back to his hand. He'd repeat this process to get infinite mana, then all he has to do is continue it, and instead of blinking Peregrine Drake, he starts doing it with his Pioneer, getting him infinite 1 1 Thopters. But that's not happening anymore, so Cameron will move to his end step, and he'll blink his Pioneer to get another Thopter and another counter. Now in Caden's turn, he'll play another Island, then he'll move Bonesaw over to Malcolm. After this, he'll move to combat and hit Sam for 3 Commander with Malcolm, he'll make a treasure and exile a land. Post combat, he'll cast Treasure Cruise, and he exiles his entire graveyard to assist with this cast. He'll then cast Wayfarer's Bobble, and then pass the turn to Sam, who starts off by cycling Secluded Step. Caden decides to respond to it by cracking his Wayfarer's Bobble to find a basic to the battlefield. Sam will then play Thriving Isle on green as land for turn. He'll then cast Surgical Skull Bomb. Then he'll pass the turn to Ethan, who will stop on instep to cast Displace, blinking Bloom Hulk and Mold Drifter. This lets him draw two cards and proliferate. He also has two Risen Reef triggers, which are both non-land, so he essentially draws four here. Then, still on instep, he'll cast and kick Blink of an Eye, targeting Soul Herder. And since that was his second spell this turn, his Drake gets a counter. Then he'll move to his turn. And on his upkeep, he still has the initiative, so he makes Cameron fall into a trap. He'll then play Terramorphic Expanse and sacrifice it for a forest, and since he sacrificed a permanent, his Heron gets a counter. He'll then cast Leafkin Druid, Path of Ancestry Scry is to the top, and it's non land, so it goes to his hand from Risen Reef. He'll then cast Terrain Elemental, this will trigger his Drake, and then Risen Reef, and it's non land. He'll then cast Woodland Changeling, Risen Reef trigger, it's non land. He'll then Convoke Out Living Totem, and when it ETBs, he'll put another counter on his Glimmer Bell, and then his Risen Reef trigger is non land. After this, he'll move to combat and swing for 6 in the air at Caden, who has no choice but to just take it. The turn is then passed to Cameron, and he'll start off with an Idyllic Beachfront. He'll then recast Soul Herder, then move to combat and hit Sam for 1 in the air with his Goggled Thopter. He scries 1 to the bottom and draws a card. After this, he'll move to end step and blink his Fairy Seer with his Soul Herder. He puts 1 to the bottom, and then the turn is passed to Caden who plays another island as land for turn, then he'll cast Pirate's Cutlass, and when it ETBs, he'll attach it to Malcolm. He'll then cast Fall from Favor onto Ethan's Thunder Drake, tapping it down, and he'll become the Monarch. Then he casts Crimson Fleet Commander, then passes the turn to Sam, and draws at the end of his turn. Sam will start off by recasting his Commander, Discipline Duelist. Then he'll pass the turn, but Ethan will stop on instep and tap for 6 to capsize Fall from Favor, and he does pay for the buyback. Then he'll do it again, targeting Malcolm. Then, on his turn, Ethan still has the initiative, so he'll go into the archives and draw a card. Then Ethan remembers he did cast Capsize twice, so his Drake gets a counter. Then we have a bit of an Ethan Goober moment. He swings his Glimmer Bell and his Thunder Drake at Caden, which is 15 damage, but he says it's 16, which is exactly enough to kill Caden. 
but to be fair, all Ethan would have had to do is cast two spells and it would have been 16 damage. And believe me, he's able to cast two spells. So Caden dies, Ethan steals the monarchy, then moves to his second main. He'll cast Ivy Elemental X0 using Path of Ancestry to scry one to the bottom, and then his reef trigger is non-land. Then for one blue and most of his graveyard, he'll cast Treasure Cruise, triggering his Drake. Then he'll play Ash Barons as land for turn. After this, he'll pass the turn to Cameron, and then Ethan has to discard four cards on cleanup. Now on Cameron's turn, he'll start off with Priest of Ancient Lore, drawing a card and gaining a life. Cameron will then move to combat and hit Sam with a Goggle Thopter again. He'll scry one to the bottom, draw a card, and then play Plains as land for turn. He'll then move to his end step and blink Priest of Ancient Lore to draw a card and gain a life. Then the turn is passed to Sam, and he'll start off by casting Shielding Plaques onto his commander. Then he'll cast Ancestral Mask, and then he passes the turn to Ethan, who will capsize Cameron's Peregrine Drake on end step. Then he'll do it again on Soul Herder. Then on Ethan's turn, he finally finishes the Undercity, and he gets to reveal the top 10 cards of his library, and gets to put a creature card from among them to the battlefield with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and it gets X-proof. And of course, it's a Thicket Crasher. And this does trigger Risen Reef, and it's non-land. Ethan then moves to combat, and he swings for 22 at Cameron, which is more than enough to kill him, so Cameron will take it and die, and then Ethan will swing for 6 in the air at Sam. Sam will cast Heavy Fog for himself, though, so Cameron's still dead. Ethan will then cast and kick into the Royal, targeting Sam's X-proof enchantment. After this, he casts Frost Lynx, which will scry him 1 to the top, and then he forgets his Risen Reef trigger. The Lynx will tap down Sam's commander, but Sam will respond by cracking his Skull Bomb. Ethan will then pass the turn, and Sam will start off by casting Shielding Plaques again. Then he'll cast Cartouche of Knowledge, then he'll pass the turn to Ethan, who will tap for 6 on instep and capsize and buyback, targeting Bonder's Ornament. Then he'll do it again, targeting Sam's untapped Thriving Land. And then he'll finally do it one last time, targeting Sam's Snow-Covered Forest. Sam was holding up a lull, but now he's not going to be able to cast it. And so Sam will just start picking up his cards, because Ethan untaps and turns everything sideways. Well, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Uh, me, the narrator, I'm not so familiar with PDH, but I really enjoyed watching this game. Of course, we all knew that the Simic Ramp Elemental deck was going to win, because Simic decks just win every game if they're given enough time. But in all honesty, each deck got to do a lot, and I really enjoyed watching it. Let us know what you guys thought down in the comments below, and don't forget to check out all of our links. But I'm going to cut this outro pretty short today, because I've run out of time editing, so I hope you all have a smooth day.